Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Uh, today I'm unboxing a very interesting grand strategic World War I game from a new company, Do It Games. They're a Spanish publisher called Downfall of Empires. This is game number one in the Downfall series. We recently played game number two, which is Downfall of the Third Reich, also a grand strategic uh, game. Very interesting design. I think there's a lot of interesting things here. <clears throat> uh, really enjoyed the system, and I look forward to diving into this one uh, as well. Victor Catala is the designer. I, I was unfamiliar with Do It Games until they uh, reached out to us, and we did an interview for their Kickstarter, and uh, really, really became enthralled with the subject and the way it was being handled. So, uh, great production. First off, these boxes are fantastic. They're packed full. You'll see when we turn it over. There's a look at the map. Very common for World War One. I'm, I'm sure most of the action will be here, but there's always good action here and uh, down in the Balkans. Lots of great looking counters. We'll talk about the technology counters a little bit. And then the uh, infantry uh, counters, they, they obviously have barbed wire as well. Uh, the game takes about two and a half hours to play and can be played two to four. Uh, you, you would probably just divide up the different, somebody would play France and, and somebody would play England maybe. Not really sure, I'd have to look into that. And then also divide up the uh, more minor powers. So let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, very heavy box, very durable. I think they've done a really good job. And as far as I'm aware, these are their first quote unquote war games. Uh, and I think they've done a pretty good job. The, the first thing that you'll notice right out of the opening here is that they provide a very cool counter tray. Uh, it's got big deep wells. You can see the couple of six siders you got there and they also include some baggies. So kind of a nice touch. I wish more war game publishers did that. The first thing you'll notice here is the rule book. Uh, and you'll notice that there's there's not a lot of rules. This is not a, a extremely deep or complex game. The rule books are uh, the rule book is 11 pages. Fairly big uh, text, lots of color graphics. I felt like when we learned downfall of uh, the Third Reich, it was fairly easy to pick up. Sequence of play is pretty pretty straightforward. Now, what you need to do is understand what strategy you're, you're employing. I I can tell you, having played the Germans in Downfall of the Third Reich, I'm not sure I knew what I was doing. But as we went on, we picked it up and, and overall experienced a, a, a unique and interesting take on that, uh, on that war. So that's a look at the rule book. Very well done, very simple. Rules are not overly complex. There are three counter sheets. I'll go ahead and, and you'll notice they're dominated by these. These are technology tiles. What's going to happen is a certain amount of these players will start with, and I'm, I'm not sure, having not read the rules, which one you're going to start with. But you can then use some of your actions to then develop these technologies. You'll play them out face down on the board because technologies take at least two different turns to complete. Uh, th this is one of the more unique and interesting parts of the game. Uh, here you can see there's different defenses, so a, a one value and a two value defense. There's different forms of attack. In fact, three, and, and the counters here we're looking at are the CP, uh, the, the central powers. But you have offensive aviation, you can develop planes, poison gas. You'll see this one has a year uh, limitation, can't be done in the first year of the war, uh, but then you can do it later on, 1915 to 1918, before it's kind of over. Uh, here you have tanks, your Sturm Truppen, uh, and there's another attack. I'm not sure if you can do two different offensives. Control markers, fairly simple. And then here are the unit counters. Uh, once again, grand strategic game. So these counters represent an entire army. You have the Germans. Uh, here you have the French. You have the British. One of the things I would say about the counters, you'll notice there are very few numbers on them. The five is their combat value. The plus two is what if they are supporting 
an army that is already attacking. The interesting thing about this game is you'll have its areas, area movement. So you might, I think a stacking limit in the other one was four counters. I'm not sure in here, it might be three or four. But if you attack into an adjacent area and they only have two counters and you have four you're attacking with, two of your counters will line up each on, so singly on each of the defending counters. And then the counters behind them uh, can support the attack. Here's the backside. They do get reduced. You can see the Germans go from a five to a three. The French go from a four to a three. And then some of their, uh, their threes go to a two. So yeah, nice looking counters. Once again, four sheets. Here's a look at the uh, allies and some of their counters. You have Serbian, uh, Polish, Belgium, uh, and even Ottoman counters. So very cool. But yeah, very similar look to the counters here. You can turn them over. Really like the art on the back of those technology tiles. Very a uh, very cool addition. Um, I probably called out some of the country names wrong, but that's okay. You guys will forgive me. Here are fortifications. There's some U.S. counters, and there's only a couple. You'll notice there were only two U.S. counters. They come in near the end of the war and, and really don't make a huge difference. Um, but here's, our, here's the fortification counters. These are barbed wire uh, that, that's going to be a neat and interesting element and look forward to that. That was one thing I felt like was missing in the World War II one. But once again, this is grand strategic. You don't always get involved in that uh, layer of granularity. Uh, two player aid sheets here. They call them quick reference sheets. Lays out the actions that you can take. Recruit, activation, research, entrenching, diplomacy, and then missions and then technologies that you can develop and what they do. So there you get a good look at those. And then just some reminder about trenches and combat. On the back side is a setup uh, for one of the scenarios that looks like 1917. Let's see what's on the other one. It's also 1917. So maybe there's only two scenarios, two setups. I think that's the way it was in Downfall of Empires. But you can see that's what a game setup is going to look like. Uh, particularly at the outset um, of the war. So very interesting. Uh, there's the player aids. Now let's go ahead and look at the map. The map is really big. It's a mounted map board. Very well done. Downfall of the Third Reich, I, that was one of the parts that I really liked the most was just the look and feel of the map and the game. I have read lots of comments online about this game and system. Uh, I've read a lot of people really like this downfall of empires, so I'm very much looking forward to playing it, having already played uh, and tackled downfall of the Third Reich. Uh, here, here's what you're seeing here is the different technology boxes. You've got allies and Russians up top. Uh, then you have German, Austrian technologies on the bottom. Over here, you've got uh, the East. You've got a, a call-out box for the Caucasus and a call-out box there for Damascus uh, and Cairo. Here's the Ottoman uh, portion of the board. Game turn track up in the right. There's a diplomacy track that was not uh, in the previous game. So looking, looking forward to that, how that changes the game. Um, You've got different tracks on that diplomacy for Italy, Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania, U.S., and Russian. Uh, and then you've got actions. See the actions, one, two, three. You can see those here on the bottom of the board as well. Just a way to track what you're doing. You have missions over here. A very good-looking board. I, I think it looks great. It's area movement. Uh, terrain comes into effect a little bit. Uh, it's not a huge uh, deal, and uh, th this looks really great. I'm, I'm very interested in trying this one out. We're probably going to play it as a part of our Guns of August event. Yes, we are doing another Guns of August event uh, in, in August. Surprise, surprise. Looking forward to that very much. Um, 
yeah, I, I like the look of this game. It's got a lot of cool elements. And having played Downfall of the Third Reich, to me, this one, getting into this one's going to be very easy. The rules are very simple, as I showed you, 11 full pages in the rule book. Uh, but a good-looking game, another big grand strategic game. I, I have really started to enjoy grand strategic because they throw some of those other elements at you, like diplomacy over there, like the technology. I, I, I enjoy that. Um, we're actually going to get a play of Unconditional Surrender here in about a month when we go to Buckeye Game Fest. Alexander and I are going to set that up Tuesday night when we get there. We're going to play through a turn or two. And then all day Wednesday before people arrive, we're going to play. Um, really looking forward to that. So there you go. Downfall of Empires from Do It Games, a Spanish pub publisher. Victor Catala. Uh, these are some, two of his designs. This one and Downfall of the Third Reich. Uh, I hope they look into some more war games. I think they've done a decent job with this. While I had quibbles about some of the victory conditions, I do think it's an interesting and unique uh, game. So... Thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.